morning, ma'am. So happy morning, everyone. I'm Good so morning, ma'am. Very happy to welcome you all for the second impact lecture, session one of the Institutions Innovation Council of Annadish College. Uh, before we begin, we'll start with a prayer song. Uh, we have a, a student uh, who will be rendering the prayer song today, Ms. Sasi Rekha from Ecom General, second year of shift one. She will give us the college prayer song. Sasi Rekha, can you please? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Vakritund Mahakaya Surya Koti Samaprabha Nirvigdam Guru Medeva Sarva Kaleshu Sarva Shutam Thank you, Sashirika. Uh, I'm very happy to welcome our resource person for Section 1 today, Ms. Hemalata Narayan, who is an eminent advocate of the High Court Chennai. I am so happy to welcome our dynamic principal, Dr. R. Shanti, and our beloved vice principal, Dr. Anita Raman, for this session. I also welcome all the IIC staff members and student members for today's session. And for those who don't know what is uh, IIC, just a short description. It is the Institutions Innovation Council and initiative of MHRD, that is Ministry of Human Resource Development, Government of India. It is established to systematically foster the innovation culture amongst all higher education. It is a mandatory aspect of higher education to encourage, inspire, and nurture young talents to work with new ideas and transform into a better individual. Uh, so Anadish is so proud and it is one of the privileged institutions to be selected for these uh, uh, you know, impact sections under IIC of MHRD India. Now, without much ado, I don't want to take much of your time. I would request, I would like to request our principal, Dr. Shanti, to address the audience. Over to Principal Ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Hema. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, very happy morning to each one of you present today. To begin with, I would like to recite a fa my favorite quote. Welcome joy with an open heart and even more an open mind. With that open mind, I extend a very warm welcome on behalf of the Management Punjab Association and the Institution's Innovation Council of Anna Adash College for Women to the guest speaker, IIC facilitators, professors and student participants. At the outset, I would like to place on record my thanks to the Ministry of Education's Innovation Cell for selecting our esteemed institution for the Impact Lecture Series 2022. My best wishes to today's notable speaker, Mrs. Hemalata Narayanan, eminent advocate of the High Court, Chennai, and President, International Human Rights Association, Kapinadu, India. Thank you very much, ma'am, for accepting our invitation and joining us today virtually. The topic of today's impact lecture one of session two is on contemporary issues in IPR. I hope that this impact lecture will educate us all and help us find solutions to future difficulties on intellectual property rights. Looking forward to the additional detail. Thank you all and have a very nice day. Thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, now I request Dr. Anita Raman, ma'am, who is Vice Principal and Dean Academics, and she's also the President of IIC, to introduce our resource person, Ms. Hemalata Narayan. Over to you, ma'am. 
Thank you very much. Happy morning to everyone gathered today for the virtual impact lecture session. As the president of IIC of Anavish College Government, I wish to thank Ministry of Education, MIC Innovation Council for having selected our college to deliver impact lecture series. I take this opportunity to introduce our speaker for today's impact lecture on contemporary issues in PPR, Ms. Himlata Narayanan, an eminent advocate of High Court Chennai and president of the International Human Rights Association, Tamil Nadu, India. Ms. Himlata, the proud daughter of an additional deputy superintendent of police, obtained her bachelor's degree in zoology from Women's Christian College in Chennai and her master's degree in environmental toxicology from Madras University. Despite being a science student, her passion for law and order led her to Dr. Ambedkar Government Law College in Chennai, where she received her Bachelor of Law, Bachelor of law in 1999. She has over 21 years of expertise in many branches of law and order. Ms. Hemlata is excellent at interacting with people associated with her profession. She is also an expert at interpersonal and intrapersonal communication. Bronfen and Greens Limited, IDI Financial Services, Multimax, Asset Reconstruction Delhi, Greenland Industries Limited, Chennai, Sharon Promoters, uh, Elite Hour in Los Angeles are some of her esteemed clients. Her professional experiences range from litigations in Midras High Court and encompassing things such as property, company, money suits, trademark, motor claims, rent control and insurance cases, industrial dispute and consumer complaints, and criminal cases, documentation of all types and registration works, and so on. Ms. Hemlata's accomplishments include handling money recovery suits, being appointed as a sole arbitrator by ITI Financial Services, handling criminal complaints, handling projects involving type of scrutiny, counseling, opinions, representing clients, drafting required agreements on memorandums of understanding, and so on, finally, in Chennai, Pineapple, Madurai. Let us all welcome Ms. Hemlata Narayanan for, her, for the wonderful session on contemporary issues in IPR. It is so good to have you here, ma'am, and thank you so much for joining us today. Looking forward to your lecture. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, now I request our resource person, Ms. Hemrata Narayanan, to kindly take over the section. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Good morning to one and all assembled in this video session. I wish to extend my heartfelt thanks to the Madam Principal, Vice Principal, as well as to Ms. Hema for giving me this wonderful opportunity for addressing the group of young ladies and to discuss on the contemporary issues in intellectual property rights. And uh, I, it reminds me of my good old days, which I had spent in Punjab Association, because I'm also an ex-student of uh, Adarsh Vidyalaya, where I did my higher secondary there. So it, uh, my pleasure is uh, uh, multifolded now <laughs> when I address this gathering. Thank you so much, ma'am. Okay. Now, good morning, young ladies. Uh, now we'll be discussing about the contemporary issues relating to intellectual property rights. But before we move on to what is intellectual property right, we should also know what is intellectual property law. Uh, in this era of globalization after the establishment of World Trade Organization, intellectual property laws assume much importance, quite disproportionate to what they actually deserve. The reason might be the feeling that advanced industrial society are undergoing a fundamental transformation from capital and labor-based economies into knowledge economies as an aftermath of the recent informational technology revolution. So two interesting features of a knowledge-based economy are the astonishing speed and intensity of innovation and emergence of new technologies enabling dissemination of knowledge or information in an unprecedented manner. These technological developments paved way for an upsurge in the demand for strengthening of IP protection. 
Uh, now, the entire scenario changed when World Trade Organization for the first time looked into the trade-related aspect of intellectual property rights, which is commonly called as the TRIPS. TRIPS attempted standardization of substantive law by listing out the scope, subject, matter, duration of different forms of IP. So to define intellectual property right as a subject of study has acquired great dimension in modern times. The evolution of intellectual property rights can be traced to the realization that authors of literary and artistic works and inventors need, besides reward for their creations, some form of protection, I repeat, some form of protection to prevent others from exploiting their creations without their consent. Why, once again, repeat, the need for intellectual property right, what was the need for intellectual property right, is besides the reward of our own creations, we need some form of protection to prevent others from exploiting our creations without our consent. So this realization was in the context of industrial revolution, which generated drastic changes in the society. This resulted in creating new forms of industrial revolution. The concept of protection products of human intellectual creativity has resulted in crystallization of intellectual property rights. Formerly, a number of uh, intellectual property rights such as patents, trademarks and industrial designs were collectively known as industrial property. But now, after the Paris Convention, the entire, entire scenario changed. Now they have included not only patents, trademarks, and industrial um, designs, but also copyrights, geographical indications were also brought under one umbrella along with patent, trademarks, and design. So IPR has a vital role in the life of man in modern times. The items eligible for protection under this category primarily include trademark, copyright, patents, design rights, and most astonishingly, even the farmers have to protect their rights. The rights of farmers and plant breeders for protection of plant variety and semiconductor integrated circuit. So look at the pathetic situation, even the farmers have to protect their own rights uh, for innovating, for their innovative creation in farming and plant breeding. So in addition to certain connected rights like trade secret right, publicity right, moral rights and geographical indications are also existing. Developed countries have accepted and recognized some of these rights even during 17th century. It was much later that developing countries started exploiting IPM. Intellectual property rights provides an incentive or encouragement to persons with creative faculties to undertake creative work which benefits the society at large. Intellectual property right is often referred as a negative right. I'll tell you why it is called as a negative right. Because it empowers the right holders to exclude or prohibit all others from using or exploiting the intellectual property. Intellectual property right empowers the owner to use the intellectual property in any manner he likes and to exclude or disallow others from using it or misusing it. Now, so what is property in terms of intellectual property right? The term property is subject to diverse interpretations. Property in the legal sense is essentially a bundle of rights flowing from the concepts of ownership and possession. While most of them have material existence, the value of property depends on the knowledge of use associated with it. I'll tell you a very simple example. Diamond as a property can be seen at different levels. At one level, it, has, it is just a stone value. But in age where the techniques for diamond cutting and shaping has been developed, and it is also uh, where the tool cutting techniques have developed, the tool cutting industry, because of its sharpness, increasing its industrial utility and value, the diamond gets its final, uh, what to say, value on it. Thus, the element of knowledge of use complicates the conception of property since it's a vague, ever-changing concept with changing value. A matter becomes a resource only when there is an idea or technology to use the matter in such a manner that it can satisfy a human need. It becomes a resource. 
In two senses, it becomes a resource. What is it? First is the material resource, and the other is the intellectual or technological resource. That is the intellectual capability to command its use. Once these two resources come together with respect to a substance, it becomes a property, which provides satisfactory, which, pro which provides ultimate satisfaction to the user and over which the bundle of rights can be claimed. Clear? So some of the bundle rights constituting property is outlined as possession, ownership, application, enjoyment, control, alienation, where it can be transferred, rights can be transferred, usage, right to exclude non-owners, and the power of transfer. Okay. So intellectual property is the property created by the intellect of human mind. I repeat, it is the intellect of human mind. Unlike other forms of property, intellectual property is a non-physical one which stems from or is identified as and whose value is based upon some ideas. Intellectual property encompasses the protection offered by the legal pregimes of various types like patent, copyright, trademark, designs, and trade secrets. It would also include allied and similar legal regimes like protection of plant variety and protection of databases. Intellectual property insists on some amount of novelty or originality to gain protection. The degree of newness, be it novelty or originally, differs from one system to another. The intellectual property system is duration specific. It does not provide any perpetual and absolute monopoly over the property. So once the an, uh, uh, item is identified or created, you cannot claim absolute ownership on it. Um, but these are exceptions for the limited duration in certain branches of intellectual property right. One of the most popular justifications put forward for the protection of property is to justify it as a reward for the labor put in to create or generate it. This theory was propounded by John Locke. Locke starts with the presumption that every man has a property in his own person. This presumption leads Locke to claim that an individual's labor also belongs to that individual. Uh, IPR law has undergone many changes as a result of various international conventions. Let me uh, name a few of them, like the Paris Convention for the Protection of Industrial Property, BAME Convention in the year 1886 for the Protection of Literary and Artistic Work, and Universal Copyright Convention in the year 1952 or some of the pioneering conventions. These have been revised from time to time. And in the year 1947, the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, which is GATT, came into existence. And international trade got regulated in accordance with the terms of this agreement. Over the years, this agreement got upgraded. In 1995, World Trade Organization came into existence. The member countries of World Trade Organization accepted the provisions relating to intellectual property, by accepting a special agreement on TRIPS. TRIPS is nothing but trade-related intellectual property rights. Following this, IP law has been amended by members of WTO based on TRIPS commitments. Though the latest and most comprehensive international agreement on IPR is the agreement on trade-related aspects of intellectual rights, which is the TRIPS, which was negotiated under the auspices of GATT 1994. It covers copyrights, trademarks, geographical indications, industrial designs, patent slay, layout design, integrated circuits, and undisclosed information. Uh, uh, some of the conventions which set out norms for IPR are the patent conventions, trademark convention, and the copyrights convention. So um, the most important aspect of intellectual property right is the patent. A patent is a form of industrial or intellectual property. It is a right granted to a person who has invented a new and useful article or on improvement of an existing article or a new process of making an article. It consists of an exclusive right to the new article for a limited period. After the expiry of the duration of a patent, it passes on to the public domain. So you can nobody can claim monopoly over it. 
Thereafter, anybody can freely make use of the image. The owner of the patent may either sell or grant license to others to exploit the patents. The property in a patent is similar in many respects to other forms of property. A patent being a creation of a statute is subject to territorial restrictions. A patent granted by a state can be enforced in another state based on mutual recognition of the So for patenting a product, there shall be novelty, utility, inventiveness, and commercial exploitability. A patent is not granted for an idea or principle as such, but for article or the process of making some article applying the idea. So the mere discovery of a new technology and industry, a patentee will be rewarded for his invention by granting monopoly right for its commercial exploitation and by granting monopoly rights for its commercial exploitation by the manufacturer of goods. The patent is granted for a statutory period and after the expiry of the monopoly period, others can freely use the invention and improve upon. Next comes the pharmaceutical invention, which has gained much importance in the recent times. Uh, this has attracted maximum public attention and debate after India joined the World Trade Organization and started implementing the TRIPS obligations in patenting of invention relating to pharmaceutical products. Patent, next comes the, so this is pharmaceutical invention. Next comes the biotechnology or invention relating to living organisms. Patenting biotechnology related invention is another area which is of uh, very serious concern. There was conceptual as well as practical reason for excluding invention related to living organism for the scope of patent law. The conceptual issues included the legal and ethical justification in giving private property rights over life. The practical reasons, um, some of the, uh, sorry, some of the developments that took place in the biotechnology towards the end of the last century resulted in finding solutions for these issues and countries, particularly US started grant granting patent to invention relating to life forms. Uh, now I'll highlight the principles which are underlying the patent law in India. Basically, patent law is enacted in the following circumstances. See, for invention, which must be new, useful, and non-obvious. Invention, which must be disclosed fully. Patent confers exclusive right to use the invention. Some restricted uses of patented invention are permitted under law. Use by a person other than a patentee without the patent holder's consent will result in infringement. The elements of novelty means newness. The invention should be something new compared to existing knowledge. If there is a prior use or a prior publication, there is no newness. This is the basis on which India challenged granting of patent for turmeric in use. The utility of invention is also significant. If a new invention is not capable of being put to use, there is little utility in patenting. This will simply become models. Patent Act in India requires utility for patenting a product. So a patentable invention must be new, must be useful, must be non-obvious. However, invention of the following categories are not patentable. That is those inventions which are injurious to public health or contrary to law or morality, new method of agriculture or horticulture, a process of treatment of human beings, animals, or plants. So use of an invention may be permissible for research and experimental purposes, and that too following ethical means. When a person other than patentee or as a signee or licensee uses such an intervention, sorry, invention, it will result in infringement. Infringement entitles the owner to claim compensation. Uh, patents relating to medicines, food items, and chemicals, they accord special status to patents. And in India, there is only a process patent for such items till 31 12 2004. However, from 1 1 2005, 
product patents may also be granted for such items as in uh, as in by as in uh, when it notified by the government so with effect from 1195 of the act a uh, patent has been granted for exclusive marketing rights which includes all medicines for internal and external use of human beings and animals which may relate to new inventions all substance used for diagnosis treatment mitigation or prevention of disease in human beings or animals all substance intended to be used for public health or control of epidemics among human beings and animals insecticide germicide fungicides weedicides and all other substances for protection and preservation of plants all chemical substances used as intermediates in medicines <laughs> there are certain inventions which are not patentable like an invention which is frivolous or which claims anything obviously contrary to the well established natural laws an invention the primary or intended use of which would be contrary to public order or morality or which causes serious prejudice to human animal or plant life or health or to the environment the mere discovery of a scientific principle or formation of an abstract theory or discovery of any living thing or non living substance occurring in nature theory of relativity is an instance of abstract theory not patentable the mere discovery of any new property or how it will be used for a known substance or the mere use of a known process machine or apparatus unless such known process results in a new product or employs at least one new reactant a substance obtained by a mere admix admixture resulting only in the aggregation of the properties of the components thereof of a process for producing such substance the mere arrangement or rearrangement or duplication of known device each functioning independently of one another in a known way so these are there are certain other uh, 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 objects which are not patentable uh, i will provide you the link at the end uh, where which will give you a very clear indication of the inventions which are not patentable okay then so the uh, to give you an idea of where this uh, patent office in india uh, is located the indian patent office is located basically at calcutta it's also at uh, with the regional offices at uh, mumbai chennai and delhi the controller of patents is the head of the department and there are uh, technical experts to scrutinize the inventions uh, under the patent act application has to be submitted in prescribed form as per rules to the concerned regional office along with provisional specification of the product which you have invented on receipt of application it will be scrutinized meticulously by patent examiners who are technical experts the examined patents will be further examined based on complete specifications filed by the applicants within 12 months normally or 15 months from the date of filing of the original application application for patents shall not be open to the public for a period of 18 months from the date of filing or priority date whichever is earlier on the expiry of that period it shall be published normally the inventions will be published in patent journals and extraordinary gazette any interested party can oppose the grant of patent for the invention so after hearing both the parties and receiving the objections the controller of patent decides the matter if the application is not opposed or if opposition is decided in favor of the applicant he will seal the patent with patent number thus a patent is an invention approved by patent authority after duly complying with the provisions of the patent act this patent will be identified by its patent number um <clears throat> now the procedure for acquisition of patents application of patents everything is clearly um, will be clearly sent in the link which i'll be forwarding the process of scrutiny of patent application the control of patents has the following powers that is power to make orders relating to division of application power to make orders relating to dating of applications power to accept or refuse application and if the applicant fails to amend the complete specification as directed by the controller powers to reject application on the grounds of potential infringement powers to make orders for substitution of application etc are some of the powers of the 
Patent Authority of India. Um, another aspect is also the biotechnology and patents. So as I earlier told you, biotechnology is a st study dealing with the practical application of living organism or industrial purposes. Modification and application of living beings for different purposes is possible only through biotechnology. The inventions of biotechnology interfered with life and ends. They were formally frowned upon by society on moral considerations. Hence, the old view was that living beings should not become a subject of patent monopoly. Later, with the production of non-natural living beings through biotechnology and their practical application for various purposes, patenting of living organisms was considered justified. Hence, a new approach emerged. Accordingly, it was recognized that creations of God or nature could not be patented, while creations of men involving the application of patented. Thus, in uh, case law, Diamond versus Chakravarti, the Supreme Court of America upheld the grant of a patent for a microorganism. In this case, the inventor genetically modified the bacteria to inject capacity to clean up oil spills in oceans. Now, what are the rights that are conferred on a patent? Or what is my right as a patentee? A patent is a great conferring certain monopoly rights on the granted for a definite period subject to certain conditions. A grant of patent gives the patentee exclusive right to make use of the patented article or process. Apart from this right, a patentee has also the powers to assign the patent, grant licenses and deal with it for any consideration. Uh, so basically, the rights of the patentee include make, use, exercise the patent right. He also has the right to sell and distribute. So a patent holder has an exclusive right to exploit the patent. A patent can be used for manufacturing the patented article or substance. And he also has the right to assign and give license others to use this whatever uh, invented by you. Now, what is the uh, remedies or what are the remedies that are available if an infringement takes up? The Patent Act does not define as to what constitutes an infringement, but it's usually understood as violation of the monopoly rights of the patentee to make, use, exercise, sell, or distribute the invention in India. Any person who manufactures a patented article without authorization or uses a patented process likewise is termed as an infringer. Innocent use of patent for experiments and instruction, use of invention in foreign vessels, etc. are not considered as infringement. When infringer adopts all the essential features claimed in a patent, it will be a direct infringement. When infringer adopts some of the essential features of a patented product, it is called indirect infringement or colorable imitation. Copying of essential feature of any invention is referred to as adoption of pith and marrow of the invention. So infringement during the manufacture and after manufacture can also take place. While manufacturing a product or using a process for manufacturers which is already patented, by a non-owner, there will be infringement during manufacture. The list of infringing acts after manufacture includes disposing of patented products manufactured by a person who is not a patent owner and the use of chemical equivalents in place of chemicals used in the patent process. When an invention consists of a number of parts acting on each other in a particular manner, it must be shown that the infringer's selection as well as arrangement of parts is substantially same to place it under infringement. When there are six features in an invention and when one of these features is copied, then there will be no infringement. When a patent is infringed, action for violation is to be brought within a period of three years. No notice of infringement to the defendant before filing a suit is necessary. That is too technical. I don't want you to go into it. The right to sue for infringement belongs to the patentee. The exclusive licensee can also sue for violation. Suit can also be filed by an assignee or a co-owner. 
Any person who infringes the patent may be used for infringement by any of the following persons, like importers, dealers, servants, agents, or even users of a patented article. So the defenses, now we need to know about the defenses which are available for patent violation. The defenses which are available are the person becomes entitled to sue for infringement. The, uh, the allegation, if the allegation of infringement is false, then you can very well file a suit for damages also. So there are uh, specific remedies which are available when any infringement takes place. Next comes, next to patent comes the broad category, trademarks. Trademarks in India are presently governed by uh, Trademarks Act 1999. Till its enactment, it was the Trade and Merchandise Mark Act in 1958, which governed trademarks for over four decades. So now that we have an idea of what a patent is, now we, have, we also have to know what a trademark is. I'm sure you're all aware of what a trademark is. But still, trademarks are symbol marks or alphabetic marks used for identification of products. Trademarks are associated with classless of goods. They give distinctiveness to a product to distinguish it from other products. Till enactment of Trademarks Act 1999, services were not subject to protection. However, with enactment of new act, service marks are also eligible for trademark protection. Okay, so the objectives of this uh, Trademarks Act is to allow registration of service marks to do away with the party and party registration under old act and ensure uniform registration, to simplify the trademark registration procedures, to extend the period of protection of registration from seven years to 10 years, and to simplify the Trademarks Act. So in a nutshell, the objective of this uh, Trademarks Act is to provide registration of trademark services in addition to goods, to bar the registration trademarks, which are imitation of well-known trademarks, to enlarge the grounds for refusal of registration, and to delete the profession, uh, sorry, provision for defensive registration of trademarks, to amplify the factors to be considered for defining a well-known trademark, to do away with the system of maintaining register of trademarks in Part A and Part B as well as the, in the as uh, stipulated in the old Act to simplify the procedure for registration of registered users and to enlarge the scope of permitted use. So these are the certain objects of Trademarks Act. Now, we should know what is protected under trademarks. Trade and service marks are protected from infringement and passing off. The protection against infringement is available only for those marks which are registered under the Act. However, even in the absence of registration, action can be taken to the marks. In such cases, we'll usually direct the concerned party for registering the trademark. Uh, um, similar to the patents, the protection of trademarks is also governed by TRIPS, which is the Trade Related Intellectual Property Rights Agreement. This agreement is presently administered by WIPO, which is the World Intellectual Property Organization and WTO, which is World Trade Organization. Under Madrid Agreement, WIPO grants protection of trademarks for a period of 20 years at a time. Such trademarks are renewable for a further period of 20 years each. And uh, trademarks includes a device, brand, heading, label, ticket, name, signature, word, jetta, numeral, shape of goods, packaging or combination of colors or any combination thereof. So permitted use in relation to a registered trademark means the use of trademark by a registered user of the trademark in relation to the goods or service with which he is connected in the course of his trade and in respect of which the trademark remains registered for the time being and for which he is registered as a registered user and which complies with any conditions or limitation which the registration of registered users is subject. <clears throat> now, I will highlight about the trade description. Means that is the trademark description means description or statement or other indications as to the number, quantity, measure, 
gauge or weight of any goods as to the standard of quality of any goods or service according to the classification commonly used or recognized in the trade as to fitness for the purpose strength performance of behavior of any goods being drug as defined in the drugs and cosmetic act or food as defined in the prevention of food adulteration act as to the place or country in which or time at which any goods or service were made produced or provided as the case may be or as to the name and address or other indication of the identity of the manufacturer or of the person providing the services as to the mode or manufacture of producing any goods as to the material of which any goods are composed or to any goods being the subject of any existing patent privilege or uh, patent rights now trademark can be classified as conventional or traditional and non conventional or non traditional which does not belong to the pre existing category of a traditional trademark and is often difficult to register but which nevertheless fulfills the essential criterion of being a trademark that is uniquely identifies the commercial origin of the product uh, the non conventional trademarks are mentioned as follows that is the smell marks smell marks are potentially capable of being registered as they can indicate the commercial origin of the goods and services but in practice it is very difficult to fulfill the condition of graphical representation of a smell uh, similarly next comes the sound marks for sound marks there have been alternate methods for graphical representation of sounds these include the depictions by oscillogram spectrum spectrogram and sonogram There are many sound marks registered in different countries around the world. Jingles such as the Nokia ringtone, roar of lion used by MGM, where a sound a sonogram or spectrogram adequately represented the roar as it depicted its pitch, progression over time and volume. And the chime used by NBC all have a distinct character and assist in the identification of product, thus defining their commercial origin. In India, sound marks are capable of being registered as trademark because in the year 2008, the first sound mark to be granted registration by the trademark of registry was the Yagu Pure. Next is the color marks. Color per se is not protected under trademark law, but the combination of colors could be protected as trademark. And the same was made clear in a case law, Liberal Group versus Benelux trademark. where the european court of justice stated the criteria for job for graphical representation as laid down in the uh, sigmund case that such representation must be clear precise self contained easily accessible intelligible durable and objective and uh, the other non conventional trademark is the taste marks one among the senses of human being is that of taste sense which identifies the flavor of the product one can choose a particular taste or flavor as the trademark of his or her product provided the taste or color is acquired distinctive character in terms of having consumer association to identify the same as a distinct trademark substantial use of the taste mark is essential before seeking protection and registration if it is a common taste or flavor which is available and known in the market the same cannot be claimed In the Western countries, such as U.S. and Europe, there is increasing demand for recognizing the trademark. The requirement of visual or graphical representation of the requirement of trademark under the existing trademark law may not be possible to satisfy in case of taste mark. I hope you have taken up the difference between the trademark and the taste mark. Uh, so, how do we go about if you know or if you come across infringement of these trademarks? so infringement of trademarks involve violation of trademark rights this is again a very serious offense unauthorized use of trademarks any uh, can take any form of infringement or passing off so in order to con uh, in order to constitute an infringement any of the following elements must be present that is using of a registered trademark by a person other than its registered proprietor or a registered user using you the either the whole of the registered trademark or an adapted one by making a few additions and alternate alternations using such infringing mark in relation to regular works the infringing trademark is identical or similar to the trademark already registered when the trademark is such that there is likelihood of causing confusion on the part of public and advertising of trademark as if it is owned by the unauthorized user all these are punishable offenses and uh, this uh, different forms of infringement are using a deceptively similar mark 
और मिसलीडिंग यूज ऑफ मार्क और मिसलीडिंग यूज ऑफ ट्रेड ओरिजिन सो रजिस्टर्ड ट्रेड मार्क इज इन्फ्रिंट बाई पर्सन हु यूज इन द कोर्स ऑफ ट्रेड अ मार्क बिकॉज ऑफ इट्स आइडेंटिटी विच द रजिस्टर्ड ट्रेड मार्क एंड द सिमिलरिटी ऑफ द गुड्स और सर्विस कवर्ड बाई सच रजिस्टर्ड ट्रेड मार्क और इट्स सिमिलरली टू द रजिस्टर्ड ट्रेड मार्क एंड द सिमिलरली of the goods or services covered by such registered trademark or its identity with the registered trademark and the identity of the goods of the goods or service covered by such registered trademark is likely to cause confusion on the part of the public so a registered trademark is infringed by a person who not being a registered proprietor or a person using by way of a permitted use uses in the course of a trade a mark which is identical with or similar to the registered trademark and is used in relation to goods or services which are not similar to those for which the trademark is registered and the registered trademark as a reputation in india and the use of the mark without due cause takes unfair advantage of or is detrimental to the distinctive character of repute of the registered trademark so i have given you a broad outline of the patents law trademark and the third most important one is the copyright law so law relating to copyright deals with protection of rights on certain types of works resulting from the intellectual labor of human beings copyright substituted in original literary dramatic musical and artistic work cinematographic film sound recording and the copyright protects only the expression of idea but not the idea procedure mathematical concept or the method of operation copyright protects the expression of idea that is original and fixed in tangible media in india the term originally is interpreted in the case erabatra uh, rao versus b and sharma which is a very uh, popular case when original composition we do not mean to convey that it is confined to a field which has never been carried either to by any other person or persons either in respect of ideas or material comprised therein such contributions are very few as most works must depend upon the contribution of others using them as steps in aid of reaching a particular object which may be original in its design and conception so the copyright protection subsists in original works in any medium of expression which can be perceived reproduced or communicated either directly or indirectly the perceiving may be either with the aid of a machine or a device however copyright does not extend to any idea procedure process or system method of operation concept principle or discovery copyright subsists subject to the provision of the copyright act <clears throat> okay that is about uh, copyright then we have what is uh, uh, what relates to the dramatic work and the musical work that is the dramatic work which relates to a uh, piece of a recitation choreographical work or entertainment in dumb show which has to be included in uh, the dramatic work category similarly musical inventions or musical ideologies all these are protected by the copyrights act so the meaning of copyright uh, act as per the copyrights act is in case of literary dramatic or musical work not being a computer program to reproduce the work including the storying thereof in any form to issue copies of the work or in case of uh, artistic work where to communicate the work to the public issue copy of the work to the public all these or uh, uh, i mean come under copyrights act other than this we also have the copyright of computer programs in regard to computer programs copyright extends to again reproduction storage and translation selling or giving on hire or offering for sale or hire any computer program so computer program means uh, i'm i'm sure you all will be aware it means a set of instructions expressed in work code schemes or in any other form including a machine readable medium capable of causing a computer to perform a particular task or achieve a particular task it may be written in any of the languages like cobol fortran ka pascal or a program so it must result in causing a computer to perform a particular task or achieve a particular task or achieve a particular result similarly artistic work copyright in artistic work is protected by the copyrights act 
And in deciding whether a work has artistic nature, the courts of law will consider the existence of artistic features. However, even in uh, craftsmanship or artistic nature exists in the following, like furniture engraved with artistic work or phototypes of furniture or carpenter's work. However, artistic protection is not given to any, um, uh, what to say, uh, um, uh, any other uh, like simple uh, uh, ideas or inventions. Artistic work would include adaptation of a literary work by way of performance into a dramatic work. Okay, so that is about artistic uh, copyright. Uh, the last aspect is also about license. When we uh, talk about license, it is nothing but an authorization to do certain acts, which if done without said authorization would be an infringement. The owner of a copyright may grant a license to do any of the acts in respects of which he has an exclusive right to do. With the grant of license, a license gets the right to exercise the rights specified in the license, but does not become the owner of the right. So the issue of license is different from ownership. So the owner of the copyright in an existing work of the prospective owner of the copyright in any future work may grant an interest in the right by license and right signed by him or his duly authorized agents. <clears throat> so no license of copyright in any work shall be valid unless it is in writing signed by the owner of the copyright or his authorized agent. The license of copyright in any work shall identify such work and shall specify the rights assigned and the direction and territorial extent of such assignment. License may be exclusive or non-exclusive. Exclusive license means a license which confers on the licensee and the persons authorized by him to the exclusion of all other persons, including the owner, any right in the copyrighted work. In the case of a non-exclusive license, the owner of the copyright retains the right to grant license to more than one person or to exercise it himself. In the case of a sole license, the license can exclude all others except the owner of the copyright. So in the case of joint ownership, a joint owner cannot, without the consent of all other co-owners, grant a license of any interest in the copyright. So this is about the um, intellectual property law and the rights which we have to enforce um, our rights. Yeah, if you have any doubts, uh, you can ask me. Otherwise, I shall give you a link where you can put forth your doubts and it shall be answered. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. <clears throat> it was indeed a very in-depth and very detailed uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you're detailing on all aspects of IPR. It was an awareness for us as well. You know, I think even the audience would have taken a lot from you today. Uh, you have, like, I think uh, you have, uh, you know, touched upon almost all aspects, like your valuable in insights on patents, rights, trademark, taste mark, copyrights, artistic and dramatic works, computer programs, license, so many areas. So it was very interesting and very useful session. Uh, for all of us. Uh, I'm sure it would create a much needed awareness for all the young talents to protect their original works. I think they would have got an idea by now. So thank you so much, ma'am, for detailing everything. I wish we had more time with you. Maybe mm -hmm. even last time it was online with you. I think next time probably we should bring you to college and have some session with the students directly. Mm -hmm. So I sure, next sure. that could be done. So thank you so much, ma'am. And students, any doubts, you can unmute yourself and ask or put it in the chat box. Any clarifications, you can put it with the same in the chat box or you can unmute and ask. Any doubts? Uh, just I want to ask you personally from your presentation, yeah. just uh, uh, like you said, you have to file with an officer. Uh, 
for our rights, whatever patent rights. So can any common man directly go and file for this or do we need an expert, somebody like an advocate like you or somebody along with us uh, so that everything is documented perfectly? So how, how it can be? It has to, yes, as you rightly said, it, uh, it has to be presented in a particular format. So either you can approach the patents rights office uh, at Chennai, they will give you a form. Uh, if you have the adequate knowledge, then you can uh, probably fill in the form. But I would advise you to seek the help of a legal expert so that you can be better guided in order to get your resolution at a faster rate. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, if they have any questions, they can, uh, you can uh, either uh, give them my mail ID, they can come back with their questions. Okay. Or I'll, and I'll also send you the link, okay, relating to this. If they have any doubts, they can refer this. Sure. Okay, Professor, the proceed. Can we have a photo session with ma'am? Yeah, sure, ma'am. So, can everyone please turn on your cameras so that we can take a photo for documentation? I'll change the slide. So, ma'am, um, kindly um, so stop sharing your screen, ma'am. So, entire screen. Should I should the screen be there or should I stop no, sharing? No, stop sharing, pa. Okay. I request everyone to turn on your cameras. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your cooperation. Okay, ma'am. So I think we'll proceed to the vote of thanks and we'll wind up the session today. Uh, I request Dr. Varlakshmi, ma'am, uh, uh, Professor of uh, Corporate Department, Corporate Secretary Department, and also convener IIC to kindly proceed with the vote of thanks. Thank you, Rima. Happy afternoon to everyone. It has been such an honor to be a part of this wonderful event. On behalf of the Institutions Innovation Council and Irish College for Women, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed speaker. Ms. Himalata Narayanan, eminent advocate of Taiko, Chennai, and president of the International Human Rights Association, Tamil Nadu, India. Thank you, ma'am, for presenting an amazing lecture on the importance of and the issues associated with intellectual property rights. Your speech gave us great clarity and knowledge of the same. Hope the audience benefited from your lecture as I did. As a convener of IIC of our institution, I express my deep sense of gratitude to the Ministry of Education's Innovation Set for selecting our prestigious institution for conducting impact lecture series 2022. Their guidance and support throughout has made such informative sessions for the benefit of students, academicians, and professionals possible at last. My sincere thanks to our management, Punjab Association, for providing us a platform for such informative initiations. My sincere appreciation to our esteemed principal, Dr. R. Shanti, for her constant support and guidance in the elevation of IIC. Thanks to the faculty members from various departments and student participants from, for your active listening. A special thanks to our dynamic vice principal and dean academics, President IIC Anadish College for Women, Dr. Anita Raman. Thank you, ma'am. 
I extend my heartfelt thanks to Ms. Emma, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Shift 2, for hosting this session throughout. Thanks to Ms. Prima Kumari, Assistant Professor, Department of Home Science, Shift 1, for the technical support rendered by her. My thanks to Ms. Madhulita, Assistant Professor, Department of ECA, Shift 2, for preparation of the reports. Thank you very much. Thanks to Dr. Shandina, Assistant Professor, Department of Corporate Secretaryship, and Ms. Charimati, Department of Commerce, Shift 1, for the certificates. And I kept the best for the last. I thank the Almighty for helping us make this event a grand success. A wide round of applause and thanks to all the participants who made the event a memorable one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dear participants, please fill the feedback form which I shared to you in the Jimmy. And you will get a certificate soon. Thank you so much, uh, Hema, ma'am, for joining us. I know it was very hectic for you. Uh, Thank you.